Welcome to this week's piece. Are you guys getting deja vu yet? Because I feel like it's the black cat walking across the path twice. Okay, but actually for this video, we're going to be working on that mirror and uh, this icky bench that may or may not go with the set, but it's going with it because it came with it. So to start with this, I'm removing the screws out of the bottom and then there's just going to be a ton of staple removal from the fabric that is just barely hanging on. So I'm not saving any of this. It's all getting tossed because it's all gross and falling apart and not anything that I want to keep. So of course we're using the same colors that we used on the other two pieces, but we're applying it to the legs and the mirror this time. Obviously we're trying to make them match. So doing legs like this, where the vast majority of the piece is legs and has all of these different sides, you want to make sure that you are constantly checking all around the legs. In this case, there's four sides. Sometimes they're round. However you do it, just make sure that you're constantly looking around the piece to make sure that you haven't missed a blend because it is really hard to match a blend that's already done because as you know wet paint doesn't look like dry paint and it's just it's hard to touch up if you have to so just do your due diligence and make sure that you are checking around the whole time as you're painting legs or things like this now, there's a couple ways to make this easier on you as you go and we'll get to that in a minute but for now this is just Blending, that's my blank blending brush. And since this is a very small area, I can kind of just go back and forth and get the blend there. I do kind of go, they're slightly swirled, but mostly up and down. And I just do it until it looks good and until I'm happy with it. And that's all that blending is. And you're using very, very light pressure for this. You don't want to push down too hard because then you're going to be lifting paint off. You want to do it very gently and it's just all the way around on all the legs and i'll just keep turning this piece as i go to make sure that i'm getting all of the legs on all of the angles and all of the sides so that i'm not missing any spots i do keep a rag in hand to keep wiping off my blending brush because i don't want that to get too muddy you don't want that to get so light or so dark that when you're trying to blend between the two colors, it does the wrong thing for you. So make sure you're keeping that clean or as clean as possible. You guys know I'm not too terribly worried about keeping things super clean, but you just want it so that it won't ruin things as you're going along. Okay, so here's a fun, easy thing when you're blending on pieces like this. So I know that I want the transitions to be easier spots to blend. So this bar right here, I'm not going to make that a blend at all. I want that to be a solid color in that area. That way I don't have to blend along the legs and then also along the bar, the structural support there. So that is one color. And that is an easy way for me to make sure that that way if I miss a spot or if anything like that, I can just go back and touch it up with that one color and there's nothing to blend. It's just an easy spot for me. And if you'll notice at the top of the legs too, I'm also not blending into the sides there. The legs are a, sec are a separate portion and I will make sure that that never touches the sides so that I don't have to blend around the edges as well. So I just try and think about that kind of stuff as I'm going. Um, you absolutely can blend around all of those areas and it would be totally fine. But if you just wanna make things a little bit easier for yourself, that's just something that I do where I'm like, oh, I don't wanna blend around that area because I already have so many other spots to blend. That's one thing I do. And then also, as I'm going through this, the next time I do the second coat, which is this coat here, I've got the bench flipped upside down so that I'm again making sure I can see all the angles and I didn't miss any spots going around on the first coat. And it's just, again, making sure that you're hitting every single spot so you don't mess up and you don't have something to fix later on. You may notice on this coat, I decided to use a smaller brush to be my blending brush. Uh, that's just because I'm working in a smaller area and it was fine to use this little brush instead of the larger brush. That's the only difference. I believe this one's a synthetic head. It doesn't really matter to me so long as I'm working with a brush that's soft enough to not lift the paint up as I go. And again, I'm just doing very, very light feather light strokes as I'm blending the two colors together. All 
All right, so I'm going to speed through the rest of this blend so that you can still watch it happen, but I've already explained everything and it's just kind of fun for some of you to watch. Um, and then we'll move on to the mirror, which already has a base coat on it. All right, I know you guys are shocked. I taped the mirror. That's only because it was straight edges and I was going to be using wax. And while I typically use my scraper on mirrors, I don't, you actually have to clean wax off of them. So that's why I decided to tape it. Typically I don't tape. <laughs> um, so this is just the second coat. As I said, I already did the first coat. This is not exactly the same as doing legs, but pretty similar in that you have to make sure that you are checking all the edges as you go around because there's a lot of times you're like, oh, the front of the mirror looks great. And then you'll see the, one of the side parts and you're like, oh, I missed a side part. That's grand, love it. And then you have to fix it. So again, just going through here, adding all the layers, same thing with all the blends, just getting it on and blend it out. Now we're onto the wash. So this is just a gray wash and it is gray paint mixed with water. You can do it to any ratios that you like. Mine are typically about, you know, one to one, but it could change. I don't measure anything. I just put things in there. If it looks good, then I use it. So you brush it on very lightly. Again, you do not want to use a wash over freshly dried paint. I always let my paint sit overnight before I apply a wash to it because if you're using water-based paint, it will reactivate and then pull off as you're wiping it back. So that's something to think about. And then also 
a fun little trick is once you're wiping back, your rag will get kind of wet with the wash and you can actually just use the rag to apply the wash. And it's just a swipe on instead of brushing on and wiping back. So just as you're going and then your rag will dry out and you'll have to go back to using the brush, which will then you'll use the rag to wipe back and then you can use the rag again to wipe on a certain spot. And that works well on these small little legs where you just have one little swipe action to do and get it done. I will reiterate that you need to make sure that you're getting all of your sides and checking every single angle and making sure that everything is getting coated with the wash so that you don't miss a spot later on. Now the mirror is a little bit more fun because it actually has a little detail into it. So as I'm doing the wash and you go to wipe it back, you'll see the wash will sit down in the recesses and just leave a really cool effect. And that's typically why I really like washes is because they will, they'll do that and they'll sit down into the crevices of things and just give a whole other layer of goodness. Now this is a sealing step. I'm taking my copper wax. This is a copper sealing wax. It is not a copper gilding wax. So it does have a bit of shimmer and a copper hue, but it doesn't full on give you the bling that gilding wax does. It's more of a subtle copper. So I'm using this again all over this piece. This is what's sealing it. I can also let this sit down in the crevices and it will leave a magical effect in those as well. And I'm just gonna put this all over the mirror and then put it all over the stool. And then I can go back and wipe back the excess wax. So this step is, again, sealing our piece, but also giving us a base layer to apply our gilding waxes and let the gilding waxes kind of spread out and be able to blend those. Because gilding waxes typically go on and dry very quickly. That is like one of the best characteristics of them is that they go on and they dry very fast but you don't want them to dry fast in this case because we're using them to blend over the piece as well. So that's why this wax, and you wanna do this while this wax is still wet, don't let it sit overnight, do it immediately after you apply it and wipe it back. So to start, just like the other pieces, I'm using the silver as kind of my base color. So I'm doing this around all of the edges and anywhere where I want it to be just a little bit darker and more shaded because I feel like the silver just adds an extra layer of depth and it being so dark. So it goes on and that's the base color that I want blending out into everything else. And like I said, since the copper wax is still wet, it's allowing the gilding wax to go on and move around and be malleable and let me do what I need it to do. And once the silver is down, I can kind of just play with the other colors. So I've got rose golds, coppers, and regular gold. And I'm just blending those into the piece to where I like them. And I feel like they're very cohesive with the rest of the set. So I used a lot of the rose gold because I did a lot of the rose gold on the dresser. And this mirror can be used with the dresser or with the vanity slash desk, depending on how it's going to be used. Um, so either way, I just want to make sure it matches both pieces in a way that is appealing and makes somebody happy. Um, and the mirror doesn't have the raised stencil on it, so it needs to match in every other way. I'm gonna remove the tape now and typically you want to remove tape while your paint is still wet but since I couldn't do that because the whole reason I was taping was so that I could wax without getting a bunch of wax all over the mirror um, I'm removing the, the tape immediately after I'm done with the finishing wax 
So now I'm going to work on the bench and it's the same process. It's getting the silver down first because that's kind of my base color and then I blend everything else in. And on this one, I didn't use any copper. I just used the silver, blend it into rose gold and then into the regular gold. And that's just a, a preference. That's just how I wanted to do it. Um, you can change up the colors obviously any way that you like. I mean, this whole entire set could be done in a completely different realm of colors but the same techniques would still apply. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. And of course I had no fabric in my stash that I felt would work for this piece. So I went to Joann's and I always go to this section, which is kind of the super heavily discounted section this right here, I'm actually sad that I didn't get. I almost wish I would have got it. The only reason I didn't is because if somebody was using it as a vanity, I didn't want them to get something on there and not be able to clean it off very well. So I opted for that gold. It's kind of a champagne that would kind of match everything else. And then that gray was also an option. But I just decided it was too bumpy for me. So I picked up this foam. It's just high density foam. We're doing the easiest job ever. This is not anything crazy. This is like just super, super beginner friendly. Um, I am using minimal products and just getting it done. So for this bench, I needed two sheets of that foam and then I just cut it down to size. I do let the foam come out a little further around the edges just so that I, you're not, your legs aren't touching wood because we'll use the fabric to stretch it over and cover up the sides of the wood so that it's comfy all the way around. And I'm just using a sharp blade to cut it out. Now I lay out my fabric on a flat surface and then lay out the padding over the top of it. And then of course lay the board on top of that and then I can start cinching the fabric around over the edges. So of course I start with one side and then I'm tucking the end underneath so that there will be no raw edges on this because I'm not going to use a dust cloth. Um, this doesn't need one. It's just a wood on the bottom, so it's not necessary to use a dust cloth. You can if you want it to look more polished, but this originally didn't have anything covering the bottom, so I wasn't worried about that. So I'm just taking my hand stapler and again, I have that pulled fairly tight, but then this other side is where you're going to get the extra, extra tightness. And you want to make sure that you're pulling this again tight enough to pull the foam over the edge of the wood so that the you can't feel the wood underneath it. So I always start from one side and then work the opposite side and then I just go around the entire piece. Once those two are sealed down, it's pretty easy to make sure. Um, you do wanna make sure that you aren't doing anything too tight or too loose because then you'll see rippling when you flip it over and you don't wanna do that. All right, once you get all the sides done, then you can move on to corners. Now, there's a couple ways you can do corners. Um, this way will give you a rounded edge, which is what I opted for, where you tuck in both sides and then kind of do it diagonally. And then you can also do it more squared, where you tuck in one side and then fold it over. 
and that will give you more of a squared look. So that's personal preference and how you think it will look best on your piece. I was just kind of trying to figure out what way I wanted it and then again I decided to do the more rounded corner. And you just have to watch the fabric to make sure you're not getting too many wrinkles and this way really wanted to wrinkle on me so. You'll see the extra bit of fabric there. You'll just cut off the tail end and I did the same thing as I did with the edges and that I just tucked it under to make sure it was nice and clean looking. Then of course you will finish this up on all four corners. Now of course I will reattach it to the base with a three-year-old trying to climb on me because I am forever a jungle gym. And then of course I have to just let him do it because sometimes it's easier to just let him help than it is to have him sit there and watch and jump on my back. And then I just need to clean the mirror. So typically what I do to clean mirrors is just use a razor blade. Um, this scrapes everything off. You obviously don't want to gouge the mirror, but if you keep it flush, it just does a really nice clean finish on it and you just can touch it up with a shop towel or something like that to make sure everything's off. I did get a little bit of wax on it, which was just mildly upsetting, but I made sure to get it all cleaned up. Oh hi, Taryn Hello. and Lucas here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got the finale of these gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous pieces. They turned out so lovely. Yeah. I couldn't be more pleased with them. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to thank you guys so much for the response to the other two videos. They're doing great. Yeah. I always get nervous posting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a good job. I always get nervous when I feel like I'm explaining too much because I don't want to bore you and you guys have just given like the best responses and saying like, no, it's good. We're actually learning stuff. So that's the goal. I'm so glad that you're gaining some information from the series and that you're liking it. I've had a lot of people <laughs> that say they're like, oh, I'm going to try this. So I'm like, ah, oh, that's so exciting for me. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for all the lovely comments that you leave me all the time. You guys are just the best humans in the whole world. So thanks so much. My channel's growing so, so quickly because of you guys. So just thank you. I hope you know how just much I really, 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 truly appreciate you. Thank you again. I got more, more coffees coming. Thank you so much. You guys are so kind. And with a three-year-old, coffees are appreciated. <laughs> um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Here is the last. We'll get you some photos and you'll be able to see everything all put together. And we'll see you next week. Right? So I always get nervous when I... Yeah. Hey. 
can you let me talk for a minute and then you can talk? I want to talk with you. I know, and you're doing a great job, but let me finish a sentence first before you say yep, okay? Is that okay?